How are you all doing? I miss you all. I have a story for you today. The story is called Too Many Frogs and it's by Sandy Asher. Illustrations by Keith Graves. Mm, that's a lot of frogs, wouldn't you say? Too Many Frogs by Sandy Asher. <coughs> Rabbit lived all by himself in the hollow of an old tree. He cooked for himself. He tidied up after himself. And at the end of each and every day, he read himself a story. It was a simple way of life. No fuss, no clutter. And Rabbit liked it. That sounds nice. But one rainy evening, he heard a knock, knockity knocking at his door. It's Froggy, croaked a deep voice. Don't care for the storm. Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read myself a story. Love to listen, Froggy cried and hopped right inside. Don't mind, do you? I suppose not, Rabbit said. <clears throat> so Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, he cheered when Rabbit had finished. Storm's ended too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodaloo! I don't know. Looking at Rabbit's face there. Think he had fun? I don't know. The next evening, as usual, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a story. But before he could begin, he heard another knock, knockity, knocking at his door. It's Froggy, croaked the same deep voice. Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read myself a story. I know, Froggy cried and hopped right inside. Don't be invited. Love to listen, but first, let's fix ourselves a snack or three. Don't mind, do you? I suppose not, Rabbit said. So Froggy hopped and popped and whipped and flipped and mixed and fixed a snack or three. Too much fuss, Rabbit. He likes everything neat and tidy, doesn't he? Oh, boy. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, he cheered when Rabbit had finished. Snack's gone, too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodaloo. Look at the mess, and he likes everything tidy. Ooh. I wonder if you can tell how Rabbit is feeling on this next page. Look at this illustration. The next evening, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself another story. But before he could begin, there was that same knock, knockity, knocking at his door. It's Froggy, croaked the familiar voice. Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read, he began. I know, Froggy cried and hopped right inside. About to read yourself a story. Love to listen, but first let's get ourselves all comfy cozy. Don't mind, do ya? I suppose not, said Rabbit. Oh my. So Froggy fluffed and puffed and mushed and smushed and piled up billows of pillows. Too much clutter, Rabbit thought. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, he cheered when Rabbit had finished. Bedtime too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodle-doo. Oh, poor Rabbit. The next evening, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a new story. But before he could begin, there was that knock, knockity, knocking again. It's Froggy! This poor face. I think he's panicking. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Look at him. Look at him pulling his ears. Ah! Rabbit opened the door. 
I knew, Froggy cried before Rabbit could say a single word. You were about to read yourself a story. Love to listen. But first, meet the family. I've been telling them all about you and your stories. Love to join us. Don't mind, do you? Hmm? Rabbit looked at Froggy's family. Big frogs and little frogs. Dozens and dozens. All wearing t-shirts. Frog family reunion. Too many frogs, he thought. Too much fuss. Too much clutter. But I do mind, Froggy, he said at last. You do? Froggy asked. I never invited you in, Rabbit explained. I never invited you to fix the stack. I never invited you to get all comfy cozy. And I never invited your family to join you. So I do mind very much indeed. Uh-oh, croaked Froggy. This will never do. Thanks for your kindness. Toodaloo. Alone at last. Rabbit sat down to read himself a story. For one anxious moment, he waited for a knock, knockity knocking at his door. and never came. Don't mind, do you? He asked himself with a chuckle. <laughs> Most certainly not, he answered himself. And began to read. It was a good story. But something was missing. Snacks make a good story better, he thought. So he fixed himself a snack and read on. It was a very good story. But something was missing. Pillows make a good story better, he thought. So he fluffed himself a pillow and read on. It was an exceptionally good story. But something was still missing. Hmm. So he missed the snack. He missed, missed the comfy cozy. What else could he miss? Do you have any ideas? Rabbit blinked once. Rabbit blinked twice. And then he sighed. It's froggy, he told himself. At last. He loves to listen. Rabbit opened his door. There sat Froggy and his family, waiting patiently to say they were sorry. Never meant to be rude, Froggy said. Brought you a t-shirt. Frog family reunion. Thank you, said Ra Rabbit said. I was about to read a story. Would you like to join me? Love to listen, cried the frogs. And... In they hopped, big frogs and little frogs, dozens and dozens. Rabbit offered them a snack, or three, and helped them fluff their pillows. Then every frog listened while Rabbit read a story. Well done, they cheered when he had finished. So many frogs, Rabbit thought. So much fuss, so much clutter. It was a different way of life. And Rabbit liked it. And that is the end. Well, I'm glad that River Abbott figured out something that we probably all already know. It's way more fun to share a story, isn't it? I like sharing a story, sharing a story like this and reading with Riverside students or reading uh, an adult book, a novel, and sharing with my friends what happens in our stories like book clubs like you guys do. So I hope you have a wonderful night, sleep well, and take care.